I want to talk to you a little bit about some of the injuries maybe you've sustained during your shoots. And, you know, I think motocross, you know, I've seen some of these shots where it literally looks like you're laying on the ground, shooting up at somebody, you know, hurling a bike mm -hmm. over you. Um, you put yourself in harm's way, but you actually had a really traumatic accident, but I guess you weren't doing something terribly dangerous. What happened? No, it's it's not. A, of of all the ways that I could hurt myself, um, it, this wasn't exactly what I call glamorous or uh, expected. Um, I broke my neck and I became a quadriplegic for uh, about an hour, and um, it was a result of walking back to my hotel room and I was ducking underneath an outside stairway, and I compressed C three and four and I went down and couldn't move. So you were ducking and, f and, and then fell? Yeah, I mean, I went so down like a, a sack of potatoes. Just a complete freak accident. Absolutely. What happened after you fell? Were you did, yelling for help? Yeah, um, I, I called for help and uh, my publisher, who I was working with at the time, he came out and he was immobilizing my neck and I asked him to reach into my breast pocket to grab my cell phone. I asked him to make two calls. I asked him to call my wife and inform her of what had happened. And I asked him to call a friend of mine who's a doctor in Telluride who um, has my medical release, uh, power of attorney, I guess. And at that point, I also told uh, Ken that um, I had a do not resuscitate order so if my heart should stop, just to let me go. Ken's your publisher that was holding your neck. Yeah. What did that do to you afterwards? I mean, when you realize, when you started, well, one, how did you start to regain? When did the ability to, when did you go from, I guess, quadriplegic to starting to regain functions? Um, well, it happened in the emergency room. This happened down in Key West, or down near Key West. I was on a shoot down there and, uh, you know, I started slowly recovering, and it took, I don't know, probably about four hours. I guess in football, they call the injury a stinger. It's where um, your spinal cord rattles around inside, you know, your, your spine. And in my case, my cord hit the, the inside of the spine. And um, according to my surgeon later on, he said, you don't realize just how close you came to be a permanent quad. Wow. Wow. So I've, I can only imagine that's had to have changed your life mm -hmm. and made you look at things differently. Yeah. Um, I don't take things for granted any longer. And yeah, I still have bad days. Sure. Um, but if I can remember this incident, you know, when I'm going through kind of a hard time, um, it, that hard time becomes pretty easy. Yeah. Puts things in perspective oh, pretty quick. Absolutely. Yeah. You know? I mean, if I had to lay on my back for the rest of my life staring at the ceiling, no Especially thing. being a guy that's had such an active life. Absolutely. I mean, that would, that would be horrible. Right. Obviously, that wasn't God or whoever had, has bigger plans for you because here you are back at it. I guess. I'm very lucky. Yeah. I'm very, very lucky. Well, good. Well, tell me then, what is, now that you know, you're not a quadriplegic, you're doing well, you're, do, you're here in the gorge, you're kind of back to your roots in a sense. Where are you going from here? What's, what's the plan? What are some of the the big shoots or something that you've just always dreamt of and you've got to do? Well, um, as I you know, sort of mentioned earlier, I think you know, I'm going after the, the whole motocross thing. Um, it's something that amazes me, the athletic ability. What these guys can do is completely beyond me. Now, that's true with all the other sports that I photograph, quite frankly. I mean, you just really, this resonates with you. I, yeah, I, I think. And it's, you know, the nice thing is it's, it's a big market. It's not a fringe sport. So, and it's something that I do so I understand the sport. Again, not to the level of, you know, Some what of, these guys are doing. Sure. Still. I yeah. Mean, it's, it, it's intriguing to me. And who knows, you know? 10 years from now, who knows how I'll reinvent myself all over again, but I'll figure something out. Yeah. You know? Any shoots that you um, haven't done that you just, you've sort of that bucket list, I got to check these off? I don't know that it's shoots so, many, so much as locations. There are a lot of places in the world that I still want to go. Um, 
one of my favorite places. I did this big shoot for a pharmaceutical company about four years ago, and we went down to Chile for two weeks. Oh, nice. And I want to go to Chile and Argentina. That's that's on my bucket list. I want to go to Indonesia, another place. Um, Australia, you know, back to New Zealand. I don't know. You know, if... I, if I had an unlimited plane ticket and a passport um, and you know no responsibility, I'd I'd probably be traveling right now. That sounds pretty good. Yeah, it does. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, you got you definitely got a good life. Before we go here, though, I do want to ask because I noticed your uh, one of your one of your kids, your son. Mm -hmm. um, you were shooting, I think, the video when I when I saw it. I, I you were shooting at a motocross event, right. and your son was actually filming you, right. filming. Um, is, is, is he involved with you? Is, is that something, are you guys gonna kind of tag team this going into the future? Well, Remington is, I mean, he doesn't realize just how good of an eye he has, but he's been my assistant on a number of shoots, whether it's driving my boat, working second camera, whatever. And at 16, almost 17 years old, the kid's really, really good. So, and he's also, you know, built really, you know, nice and solidly. So I give him all the heavy cameras, uh, you know, let him carry it around, That's you know. Right. I mean, my, my neck is, you know, shot, so <laughs> yeah. it's like, I, I'll, let, I'll let him deal with it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, he's got, you know, he's got to earn his keep there and all that. So. Well, and, you know, at the motocross race, he, he turned to me and he said, Dad, I've got to be the luckiest kid in the world. And I said, really, why? And he goes, I'm the only kid down here on the field and there are only about 25 of us photographers. Nobody gets to be Experience here like that. me. Right. So he, is, is, is he into the photography too? And, and is, is it like a passion for him like it is for you? I wouldn't say so. And I don't, I'm not one of these people that feels that he needs to follow in my footsteps. He'll make his own way. He'll figure out what, what he wants to do. But if this is something that inspires him for the time being, hey, great. And it's fun for us to do together. It's yeah. just a nice bonding yeah. experience. So. Well, good. Well, Jock, thank you very much for coming on. Thank you. Pleasure meeting shot. you and getting a, getting a chance to hear a little bit about yourself and what you do. So Thank you for having me. Absolutely. You guys, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time. And remember, take care of each other. Do you have a guest idea? Let us know. Go to localite.com.